I can feel what's going on inside of a piece of electronic equipment. I, I have this sense that I, I know, and to some extent I have control over what's going on inside the transistors. And the, when I'm thinking uh, about how to solve a particular problem, I can think about it for days and weeks and nothing will happen. And then, you know, someday when I'm cutting the grass or I'm having a hamburger or, or, or I wake up in the middle of the night, the idea will be there. Uh, I, I think I, it would be egotistical of me to say I thought of it. What happened is I opened my mind up and the idea came through me and into my head. These ideas, I, I, I don't have to dig up anything. Sometimes I don't even have to be thinking about them. Uh, and there they are. It's something... Uh, it's something between discovering and witnessing. Before uh, the release of Switched On Bach, which was the end of 1968, uh, not much music had been made with, with electronic instruments. People heard lots of funny sounds. They heard the sounds in television and radio commercials. Perhaps they heard the sounds in uh, experimental music. Uh, which uh, was very, very strange to most people. Uh, but what Switched On Bach did is, was prove that you could make real music that had widespread appeal uh, with these instruments. And I think that, that was the first really big shift in people's perception. Okay, get some solder on there. For now, I should get some sound. Try the key. <laughs> Yeah, get, get an octave there. I like to design an instrument that's uh, as as open and uh, as wide range as possible so that there are as many possibilities uh, as possible. So each one of these controls here, for instance, you know, covers a very wide range. You can make, a, you make rapid sounds, long sounds, you can play on a keyboard, you can play on the knobs, you can play on the, on the touch surface. The quality of a musical sound is determined primarily by how the sound moves from beginning to end. Some sounds are very stable and others shimmer or build up and decay or vibrate in a variety of ways. And as a musician, you, you, you get to know which knob to reach for and turn when you want a certain kind of change. We began building synthesizer modules in 1964. And by the time uh, we started doing the mini mode, we had several years experience with uh, musicians using our modular equipment to produce all kinds of music. You name it, uh, there was a record out or there had been a live performance of, of a particular kind of music. So we knew, uh, we knew that uh, there were certain things that all musicians wanted to be able to do. Uh, they all uh, gravitated to this sort of tone producing capability here, three oscillators, three wide range oscillators. Everybody liked the filter and the sorts of, and these sorts of controls. Uh, this particular type of envelope, uh, where you uh, you shape individually the rising portion, the decaying portion, the sustain before you let go of the key, and the release afterwards. This particular one was actually defined for us by Vladimir Usachevsky, who had years of experience before that making uh, experimental music. But uh, his definition, uh, which this is an embodiment of, uh, has become standard now in mainstream uh, electronic musical instrument design.